Welcome to Renditor Chronicles Podcast. I'm Ethan Taylor. And I'm Dustin Jelly. Our hope is to inspire new and old hunters alike. We hope you can join us on this journey of lessons that we have, are, and will learn through the world of hunting. All right, Dusty. We're back in the house. We are back in the house, and we are actually going to be dropping what we're going to call a bonus episode. Bonus episode number one. Bonus episode number one. One indeed. That's what I just said. Echo, echo, echo. echo. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, kind dude. of. Dude. Yeah, this dude. Kind of, we <laughs> just had a full weekend. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. At least a full day. Yeah, this a is, very full day. This is rounding out a very full weekend, though. Yes. I will say that. So we thought it would be fun to drop a little bonus episode on recapping our BoFest 2019 experience. Adventures. I'm yeah. going to call it adventures. Adventures. Yes. Yeah, dude. Um, real quick before we like get rolling into that, Ooh, because we'll be drum dropping roll. This. Yeah, drum roll. Okay, so um, that's a couple <laughs> so of your, your, co- your jacket a dropped off. The couple wall. of guys that can't drum. Yeah, we're super excited too. <laughs> um, so as you've heard in prior episodes, we're working with uh, Holtz Leather Company, and we're yes. going to be doing a giveaway coming up. Um, it's going to be what? Let's see. At least one adult hat and two kids hats. Two I think, kids right? hats. Yes. Yeah. Little little miniature hats for the little mini guys. For the kiddos or girls. Yeah. We don't discriminate. Yeah. Gender here. Yeah. So um, we'll be giving away all the details on Instagram and Facebook. So if you guys haven't already checked us out there, uh, be following along. And get involved with that because it's going to be yes. awesome. The hats yeah, like literally come out. They come out, I think, this week. Yeah, I saw them drop a little teaser last week on them. And so I'm excited to see them and handle them and, and uh, get them on the boys. Yes. Also, too, I think if you guys would do us a favor, go over, go visit Holtz Leather, go purchase something uh, because that they're not only just an awesome company that are producing awesome products, but they're also the the, the family that owns it. They're actually going through an adoption process, and they just uh, they went into an adoption process apparently w- wanting to adopt siblings, and they, yep. they weren't willing to break up, and so they've just recently discovered that the what was that four kids that they it thought was initially name? four initially four turned out to be six though uh, the oldest wants to stay in country and, and age and, out, yep. so they're now adopting five. Yeah, so I'm sure any additional business. Yeah, will be very helpful <laughs> yeah. for a family that's just about to have yeah. five more kids like that. Yeah, it's no big deal. Well, no and, big any, deal. and anyone who has uh, been around or gone through the process, it's pretty arduous. So yes, I've um, been there. Obviously, prayers for those guys as well as they yeah. go through that because that's that's intense. Yes. Uh, so and anyone who has kids already, <laughs> yeah, they, they have. They already have. Wanna, how many kids do they have? Dude, I think they're doubling their family yeah, size. Pr- yeah, they're at least doubling. So please go check out Holtz Leather. Check out the products. Buy something, two, three, or ten items. And I'm sure they'll greatly appreciate yeah. it. Because we appreciate and what they're doing. And, and we you'll think love what they're doing what, yeah, is cool. You'll love what they're putting out, too. Yes. And the customized, custom, 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 uh, why am I... Customization. It's been a long yeah. weekend, dude. <laughs> Some, I don't know what hurts worse, my body or my brain. Um, anyway, you can do a ton of customizations and it's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Well, dude, let's get into it. Recap Bow Fest. time. Yeah. Yes. So what is Bowfest? Bowfest, uh, is advertised as concerts and <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, that's you can, you can we, 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 will, we will at the end, I think we're going to, we're, I, okay. I will have to what have would a you, recap what would you like to see of all my gripes. <laughs> yeah. Of, what of would Bo you Fest. like to see? Yeah. So yeah, Bowfest is um, kind of our local um, archery 3D course slash concert weekend where one of the local ski hills, Mondalac Resort, started. I think it was four years ago now. They started doing this. Yeah, big uh, 3D concert kind of event. Um, started. I think it was like two days. Now it's up to four days, and they've got just a ton of 3D. They got this year it was four courses. Each with what 15, 15 targets, 15 yeah. targets, and it was set up, um, you know, in very, you know, net, well, as hilly as Wisconsin gets ground. It's, it was, it's more hilly than, regu- yeah, it was actually, regular yeah, it was actually Wisconsin. a lot more hilly than it the rest intense, of the Midwest. Actually, yeah. yeah, it's like the, you know, the, the one spot in the Midwest that's pretty hilly. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, they have to have ski hills. I mean, there's a ski all. hill, so. There's got to be something going so, on. So, yeah, so with tons of 3D targets, you know, tons of, you know, archery vendors and uh, it's at, and the concerts, even though the concerts were kind of lame this year. It's Clint Black <laughs> and some other old country singer that I never really heard of or could tell you what song he sang. And that's obviously not why we went. We yeah. went there for the archery vendors. That's all we went there for. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, actually, we went there for to go shoot yeah and and for us um this is the first 3d shoot that we've ever been to yeah and so there is a lot because we new, live under a, a rock uh or we're just relatively new we are new and um well i had been i'd been wanting to go the last couple of years last year i didn't go because i didn't have anybody to go with and who wants to go to a what big old, a loner yeah who wants to be that guy the right little lone guy out there because right. yeah loser <laughs> So, dude, it was uh, it was legit that we ended up it working out that yep. we. Uh, okay, well, let's, <laughs> do we want to go into the details? Yeah, let's just go with the details because, because right. yeah, it's, it's just, worth mentioning. It is worth mentioning. So I'll let so, I'll let you take it away. Yeah. Here. So we we've been wanting to go to this. We've been looking at this, and well, a couple months ago we realized, hey, they're not selling any single day passes to this. All they were offering was four day passes for. Through the month of June, it was ninety nine dollars, and month of July, it was one hundred and forty nine. Which you know, hey, if you're going all four days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, not a bad deal. Yeah, I'd do it for four days. For four days, and that's the problem is we could only go one day, and yeah, so I don't know. Obviously, you feel the same way I do. I'm <laughs> sure everybody else feels the same way. We probably felt. Why would I pay a hundred or even a hundred and fifty for one day? Yep. And I don't know about you, Ethan, but I've never been to a multi-day event where they didn't offer single-day passes. Yeah, I was a little bit, uh, I was confused. We'll say yeah. confused. Yeah. So, so I reached out, had a bunch of other people reach out to uh, Mondelec slash Bofest and, you know, just inquiring about, hey, are you guys going to offer any single-day passes? There's a and, handful of us. Yeah, there's a handful out, of yeah. us. And I think I might have been the only one that actually got an actual non-automated response back saying, hey, um, at this time, we're not uh, offering any single day passes. We might closer to the event. I thought this was kind of an unacceptable because uh, like there's there's got to be more than two people out there who would like to go to this but aren't going to fork out $100, $150 for one day or plan on maybe a day pass. Yep. So I kept hounding them, hounding them in messages, hounding them on their Facebook page. I mean, I, I, I kind of went relentless. Like I, he was commenting <laughs> on random photos. Oh my gosh. Any, any there was they, one that was really funny. Yeah, anytime they started dropping a new photo, it was just like, Hey, how about offering, uh, you know, affordable day passes. And then there's one photo. They're like, Hey, tips for when you attend Bofest. one, two, three, four, and so I was like, hey, Bofest, tips for people wanting to attend Bofest. Number one, <laughs> please provide affordable day passes. Number two, please provide responses to all my comments. Because at this point, they didn't comment Yeah, no back. one gave you a legit response. Yeah, no response. So I'm sitting at uh, my table one day eating lunch with my kids. And all of a sudden, I see you know, my phone light up. And there's a you know Facebook message from rich so-and-so I was like, well i don't know who this guy is and so i went popped it open well it's it was one of those messages on facebook messenger that goes to your secondary inbox that isn't set up super well so you don't really see them and i see this guy rich so-and-so hey i'm the general manager at mondelax slash bowfest please call me at this number would like to talk well at that point then i saw he did sent me a message back in june saying the same thing. Hey, I'm Rich So-and-so, general manager, please call me. And this is, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, it wasn't and that So long. I was like, oh, shoot, here I missed this guy's first message a month earlier. Mm -hmm. So I give him a call, and you know, so we talk for a little bit, and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm Rich So-and-so, and, you know, hey, what's what's going on, you know, what these day passes? And so I explain to him, like, listen, dude, I've got, you know, there's like 10 of us that we would love to attend, but man, paying a hundred bucks, hundred and fifty, it's just for one day because that's all we're able to go to is just, it's not affordable. Like, mm -mm. and so it's like, you know, how come you don't offer single day passes? And he kind of gave me, he was like, oh, well, you know, 
at this point, you know, that's the, the, the route that we've decided, you know, and that's how we make our money. And, you know, it's not cheap to put on an event like this. And I was like, yeah, totally get it. Like, it's a, it's a super expensive to do this. And honestly, like $100, $150 for a four-day pass, that's actually a really good deal. Like, yeah. I have no problem with that. But I've never seen a multi-day event not offer single-day passes. So we're talking a little bit. And then towards the end, he's like, you said you got like 10 guys that you want that are wanted I'm like yeah about 10 he said well why don't you come down and i'll give you 10 passes um okay dumbfounded yeah i, still I, I really i still I don't yeah i still it. don't really know so i ended up like well i can be there in a couple hours after my kids are done with naps and okay i'll see you later so i went down there that afternoon met up with him real quick and and he handed me the 10 passes and he's like yeah also I threw six more in there so you can bring your family. So you guys make sure you come down, eat lots of food, drink lots of beer. Okay. <laughs> oh, my god. So, so I went down. On a, my whole goal of this whole thing wasn't to get free passes. Right. But to just get them to realize, hey, maybe we should offer single-day passes. And they're missing out on business. There's yeah. no way someone, there's not a huge portion of people. So that- instead of being like, you know what, hey, that's, you know, maybe maybe we'll do that. Instead, he hands me 16 passes at that point or worth 149. So it was, it was like, like 2,500 bucks. 2,500. Yeah. You know, two grand plus worth of passes just gives it to me for free. Yeah. It's shut up money, dude. Yeah. That was pretty much that was it. It was like, hey, if we pay this guy off to shut up. So, you know, kind of validates, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Apparently. Yeah. Well, and, and, he, and, and there was a part of me, I'm not going to lie, that was like, Deep down, I was like, no, you should give them back and be, take a stand and be like, no, all we want is day passes. <laughs> so then the other people was like, these are 16 passes. Me and my buddies, we're going to MoFest yeah. for free. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and here's, I'm going to note this too, as much fun, I mean, we've talked about it at length, where it's like as much fun as I've had, uh, like just in that one day, yeah. like such a good experience, still not willing to pay 150 bucks for it. No. For I'm one gonna, day. Not, not for one day. Yeah. I mean- and, and and, and it was a pretty it was a pretty good event. Yeah, like, and, well, especially too because the only reason you and I and everybody else we went with wanted to go was to go shoot. Honestly, I could care less about the concerts. Yeah, especially yep. this year. Like next year, they had the they've got Ted Nugent, which I'm not really honestly excited about, and then the Charlie Daniels band. I, you know, I I might go to the Charlie Daniels band just because that's that's some classic country music there. But honestly, I could care less about the concerts. I just want to go shoot. I want to go to a great course, have a great time with my friends. And that's why I want to go. And so I don't think asking for single day passes is outrageous. And here's, here's what honestly ticked me off when we showed up there to go get our passes. What do we see in their sign? Oh, they're offering single day passes for 2020, right? No, no, no. For this year. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 90 bucks. $90 Ninety dollars for a single day pass. So, so, and I, I thought that was just for the, like the concert stuff. No, that was no. Because you know, didn't they differentiate that at one they point? Did. Where they, it's like three hundred fifty yep. bucks for both events, and it's like, did you get checked one time for anywhere we walked? No, no. There's in nothing. fact, we parked for free. Yeah, parking was twenty five, and we showed bucks, up super early. Nobody was there. Twenty five bucks per day, mind yeah, you. Yeah, per day. So, and we parked for free. But that's what we get for showing up on time. We showed up early. Yeah, they didn't yeah. have anybody out there. I was like, all right. Yeah. So we parked. And then for Dustin free. was like, oh, they're gonna check my truck, and I'm like, dude, you're gonna be totally fine. You no. need to chill out, dude. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're the, like, they're gonna check your trucks, well, and I was like, dude, no one's here to verify yeah. that. So <laughs> my word against yours, uh, except for Caleb I, or Ben. Actually, ne- Ben was with us. Never heard of her. <laughs> so yeah, so that's how we we ended up getting to Bowfest because yeah. I got paid to shut up. Yeah. So. I don't think that conversation is done with Rich and Bofest because there's clearly a lot that they could improve upon. Well, and hey, a- and because we're local, I'm invested in this. I think it's a great idea and it can be made better. Well, Make I think there's Bofest a market. Great there's, again. Well, there's a. <laughs> oh, here we go. I love it. <laughs> Dude, there's a market for Make it. No Bofest Great it. Again 2020. It's yeah. happening. All right, let's step out of the political ring and <laughs> hop into the uh, archery ring, shall we? Yes, because we're politically neutral here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> moving right along uh dude all right so 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 uh, yeah go ahead at bowfest dude no 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 we're gonna start before we get to bowfest oh, we're man. giving we're you're gonna, gonna, you're, you're, oh, dude, you're gonna bring dude, that dude, up dude, i got plenty of things that are cringeworthy but your morning <laughs> sir was cringeworthy i'll tell the story how about that all right because i'm semi on the same page with you just my reaction was different okay so Very. dude all right 
So we got this plan set, right? And it is the 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 plan is pristine. We got two people ride sharing. We got uh, Ben and I in one truck, Justin and Caleb in another truck. Dustin's going to meet us at this park so we can all park for free, which was kind of the idea of this. And we'd all carpool and just split the $25 because that's outrageous for a single day. Yep. And, oh, it blew up in our faces. It was great. Yeah, Cooper's supposed to meet at 630 when the park off 210, 23. You're getting picked up by Ben. <laughs> Caleb and Ethan or Caleb and uh, Justin were riding together because they're neighbors. <sighs> it's 630 and I'm nobody else is there but me. But you know, I, you know, I am gonna. And so, my, so I'm, you're a little late because of Ben. Okay, no big deal. I can handle late. But you guys were still planning on meeting us at the location, and you did. Cool. Justin and Caleb, nowhere to be seen. Oh my gosh, it's so confusing. Yeah. So they they ended up parking in a different spot, and and <laughs> Justin's like, "Well, I'm just trusting Caleb." And oh boy. And then next thing we know, they're like, "Yeah." Well, I'm like, "Well, we're at this park. Meet us here." Five minutes later. Oh, we're at the front desk waiting for tickets. Oh, we were so confused. It was so funny. Oh, man. I see. I thought it was funny. Dustin was pretty. Oh, I was livid. He was, oh, I he was, was heated. Livid. He strangled me in the truck just to. <laughs> I did strangle him. It was, it was unreal. He was. Listen, one of my big, my big pet peeves is if there's a plan, you stick to the plan. And if it plan doesn't work, you communicate that it's not working or what's, what the change is. No. And yeah, they didn't do that. Yeah, but this is where I just go, like, I put my hands up and I go, you know what? They're adults. They put can, my pe- hands they can up figure it out. in the air. Alrighty. No, but, like, that's where for me I was like, you I know put what? my hands in the air around your neck. Dude, I refuse I refuse <laughs> to let that day get busted by anything. I was like, dude, we're going to have a great day. It's going to be a blast. This it is was. nothing. This it really is nothing. Was. It really was. Dude. All right. So we get there, so right? We get we're there. all there. Dustin's still whining for the next hour and a half, but we're going to put all that aside. We're going to put all that aside. I yes. asked Dustin at one point, I said, Dustin, are you going to be able to forgive us for this at one point this morning? So, and we, can, I said, so we can all move on. I can forgive, but I will not forget. <laughs> that is what you said. <laughs> and my goodness, did he mean it. Um, <laughs> all right. So we go to the practice range, right? Okay. We get there. There's a dude already shooting. Uh, now we know 25 yards instead of 20. So we're shooting none of us. There's what, like it, five or six of us? Yeah, at this five point? of us. None of us are warmed up. We haven't taken a single shot. Yeah. So we roll up and the guy goes, "Hey, you want to uh, fifty bucks so you can hit that uh, that elk at? Let me range it eighty five yards. Yeah. Whoever's the closest, fifty bucks." Was, wasn't it a Velociraptor? Okay, maybe was it, it was a it was a dinosaur. Dude. It was a dinosaur. Okay. There's a lot of 3D targets. And 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 Caleb, with, this is like the best part yeah. <laughs> for me. Without even thinking. Not even a hesitation. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm in. Doesn't even it doesn't even hesitate. Nope. Yep. Yeah. And then uh and then uh Ben was Ben was like, wait, do I pay you if I don't make it? Wait. He's like, he asked like four times. He's like, Well, it's a bet. How do you think it yeah. works? <laughs> So all of us just ice cold, right? Yeah. And we haven't tried a single arrow. And I, I was the first person. I'm like, nope, I'm out. Yeah. Like the furthest I've already shot is 80 yards. Like uh, you know, week, on a week ago. I don't even have an 85 yard pit. I can't Dude, do it. I, nope. was, I was like, I'm not even confident in my 80 bubble that I'm using. <laughs> so nope, I'm out, I'm out as far as the bet. I'll, I'll, I'll still shoot just to see where I end up. And uh, and who who all hit the target even? Uh, I think. Caleb missed. Yeah, he like missed it out right. Yeah, right? Ben hit it. Justin hit it. Mm-hmm. Did that guy hit it? Oh, he was in the vitals. Oh yeah, the guy hit it. Yeah, yeah, Ben, he, ben he hit won. the neck. Yeah, Ben hit the neck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no, he lost. He he, he lost an arrow. Oh, did he? Oh no, he, he we found it, but yeah, no, I lost. It. Yeah, and then and then you're like, well, I might as well try. I was just like, I'll send it. <laughs> I'll send it. I'll give it a shot. Pun intended. Yep. And. <laughs> Like the first arrow. First arrow. I, first arrow I shoot is the first arrow I lose. Yeah. And yeah, we oh, you man. missed it and we couldn't find it. What a good and it was on the side of a hill, so you'd imagine that like you'd be able to There's pick that up. Of an angle. Nope. Yep, nope. Nope. So I, I tried God. sending a couple. Yeah, you did. So, the first one was just mega yeah, short. Yeah, mega short. <laughs> it was so and good. And just that holdover. I never shot out to 80. <laughs> 70 was the furthest I've ever tried Your holdover hold was like 25 yards above it, above the yeah, target. It was if, unreal. At least, yeah. <laughs> So, I almost hit the second arrow. <laughs> so we're that, that was a great warm up. Great warm up. Yeah, everybody was feeling super confident after mm-hmm. that shot. Um, so for me, I was like, we so we we started shooting after that, right? We went and searched for our arrows. We came back down, and everybody shot probably four or five arrows, right? Mm-hmm. 
And I'm thinking like, I'm sitting there going like, okay, like 10, 15, maybe 20, 30 minutes of like warm up. Mm-mm. No, that, no, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Mm. This is what I'm saying. Like, this oh, you're thinking going in, we're going to have this time to warm up. Yeah. Like I, no, no, I was thinking like we were going to be able to like actually warm up and I'd be able to get, like get my confidence in. Right. Like, mm-hmm. and then, so I'm like just shooting all at 25 yards or whatever. And then everybody's like, all right, ready to go. And I'm like, I guess <laughs> <laughs> like my group's just like six inches and 25 yards. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> it was so bad. So my, uh, my spirits were really high on the, on the way into that first, yes. that range, the Amazon, was it? Right? Yeah. Yeah. We went to the Amazon, caught a shuttle, went on. Oh man. <laughs> and, uh, there was what, let's see, there was a, uh, we had a pretty good group size. There's me, you, Caleb, AKA the cameraman, cameraman, Ben, the OG, um, Bill, Bill yep. Corby, Corby, and Corby's Archery, and DJ from DJ Outdoors, mm-hmm. and uh, seven. Yeah. Anybody else? Oh, Justin. Yeah. yeah don't Justin. forget Justin. He'll get mad. Cameraman Caleb's neighbor. Yeah. So evidently. So yeah. So eight of us, and we went yeah. down, and we were probably actually the first group mm. to go. Yeah, people yeah, started showing up right behind us, but yeah. Yeah, because it was shooting. It was started at 7. We were there roughly 7 yeah. you know, with Miss Hat. <laughs> Still trying to get over it. <laughs> I'll, I'll be okay. And, so uh, so yeah. we start the course, right? Yeah, so we start the course. First oh, target's a hanging, what, tarantula or something, some mm-hmm. big old snake. Dude, we thought, we, yeah, I was. It was like, how far was it? It was 40 yards. Was it 40? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was 40. Yeah. Yeah. 40 shot. Bill told you to go down to the orange pin. Yeah. So, okay. So, we so, 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 second gripe. Second gripe <laughs> oh, here. Boy. So, so, BoFest, I, I, read, I read online that they had, they would have different yardages for, um, for different classes. They had their pro class, which was the, the furthest line. Uh, then they had their hunter class, middle line. And then they had their beginner slash trad bull line. Okay, no big deal. I get it. Try guys, we can't hit anything, so you know it's going to be shorter. However, when we got there and I saw what they meant by the beginner <laughs> slash tread bow guy line, I was I was deeply deeply offended. It was like five to seven yards every target. Some of them honestly less. Yeah, like, like I would, mean, just absolutely yeah. insulting. Like, okay, beginner kid. If you're if you're a ten year old out there shooting, I have no problem with that. But to classify the the traditional guys in that same class was just absolutely outright insulting. No, I think actually, you know, let's let's do a positive spin on this, okay? They think your stocking capabilities are that much higher than everybody else. Doubt it. That is exactly what I they doubt hold it. you in such high regard. <laughs> That they're like five, six, five, six yards, three, three, yeah. three, three, three yards. Yeah, I don't know why they're just not using a spear at this point. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's what it actually was. I bet. Yeah, so you can go. You can sleep easy tonight. Now mm-hmm. you're welcome. Yeah, that's not that's not the perspective I have. Yeah. Clearly. So, however, maybe maybe obviously I. So I, ultimately, as we found out, my my expectations was like. If we were to have a, a ruler stick here, it was like like ten yards, and my the reality was like at one yard. But my expectations of my abilities, yes, um, is much higher than oh through the roof than bro. five five yards. Yeah, like yeah. that's just insulting. So, so I was like, nope. First shot of the day, I'm staying at this forty yard pin. I know my holder over at forty is six inches. We're gonna send it. Your level, dude. You were right on level, dude. I was, yeah. My left to, yeah. My my level. I mean, my Your yardage. Elevation was my money. elevation was money, dude. It was perfect. My left to right, just a tad off. Just okay, a, like a foot off, a couple feet off, into oh. the tree. <laughs> it was like dead. <laughs> it's a great way to start, right into the tree. <laughs> oh man, it was good. It was good. It made me feel really good when I was when I went up. I was like, oh okay, I'll be okay. If Dustin's if he's yeah. sending that, I'm gonna be doing great today. I'll just measure myself <laughs> off the track, guy. Oh, so yeah, so that was a great way to start the day. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. I, I So I think, but the, I think I missed, yeah, I beat ahead. you out in the next like target or the, no, the next like, one you hit a tree I, and it deflected down. It was the, uh, it was a dinosaur. Don't worry people. We're not going to go over every single, all 60 targets, yeah, 60 targets. <laughs> <laughs> starting out. Like I don't want to hear we're gonna be here for single. two hours. We are going to just do a, an overview of what we're learning. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, the next one actually hit a branch. Don't worry, I have video evidence of both those shots. <laughs> oh, I believe so you, it. You I totally really, believe really it. Really excited. 
Yeah, that's pretty much all Ethan got yesterday was slow mo video of Dusty missing. Dude, there was a lot of <laughs> slow mo video. I was, I was flipping through them today. I'm like, oh geez. Yeah. Oh, uh, I did beat you on the third target though. Yeah, that, yeah. That no, you beat you actually you beat me on a few targets. I was I, I was in my I was my own worst enemy for you. At were, least, that first at course least was the, the, the worst first two. Three. Well, yeah, the first two, um, the first two courses, I was my own worst enemy for yeah. sure. Especially I was that. mentally not in it yet. Yeah, that first course was what, rough for you. Yeah, it was. It was really rough. Ooh, so I think that was. That was one of the cool things, though, to watch from my perspective. I mean, just to see you change, you know, and grow over the last month of us shooting and, and all the different things that you're figuring out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this, watch you go into the shoot totally with no, like, I'm going to say very little confidence. I mean, we walked up to, what was that boa? The hanging boa was, what, 40 yards? Maybe, 35? Yeah. 35, so 40 yards? It was something like yeah. where I was like, Oh, that's my point on. Like, I'm going to send slam, it. Slam dunk. <laughs> and even you walking up, because there's this, like, little, like, hole where its tail came down and everybody was joking, like, yeah, don't miss it. You're probably going to send it through the hole. Yeah. And, like, I could I could visually see, like, the lack of confidence in <laughs> you walking up to the line because you were like, I'm going to send it through the hole subconsciously. I could, like, visually see it. And you did. <gasps> oh, I sure It was did. great. It was good, dude. But then to see you end that and. Course three, course three, yeah, yeah, yeah. Western. course four, <laughs> different story. But 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 to see that progression though, yeah, was really cool. Of like going from like this really in unconfident, insecure mm-hmm. about your shooting ability oh, yeah. to like gaining this confidence over all these these uh mental these, obstacles. Yes, really. it was really cool. Yeah, well, I think I think what was cool is um having the opportunity to and outside of hunting, which is uh really. <laughs> <laughs> outside of hunting uh, that actually puts some pressure on, on your actual shots and kind of gives you more or less a lot. And a lot of the shots were worst case scenario, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like my arrows broken or lost if I miss this. Yeah. Cause like half the targets, I swear was like either the animal was set up on top of a cliff. So like if you missed, it was just gone or a setup in between like this six inch window in between trees. Yeah. If you miss, well, the arrows in the tree. Yep. Yeah, so there was a lot of those, and I will say, so what was cool is that there was the the two elements of the mechanical portion of it, where it's like, you know, remember, I'd say the biggest part for me, like mechanically, was I'd never shot really at a steep angle up or downhill, yeah. right? Yeah. And, you know, it's like, oh yeah, hinge at the hips. Well, it's one thing knowing you need to hinge at the hips, but what's the objective when you're doing that, right? And it took me... Uh, well, I remember at first, I mean, I sent a lot of arrows into the dirt, like a lot, um, on the first couple courses yep. on both high and, or, uh, on elevated targets and, uh, some that were lower than us and yep. finally started to put it together on course three where I was like, I mean, I had my moments on all the courses like everybody else. Um, but in, the consistency was just not there. Yep. And then finally, like on course three, it's like, okay. I was well, there was a moment that we could probably talk about where I was like, oh, okay, well, screw that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that moment, well, that was great because I remember that moment clearly. We walk up, it was, a, was it the first target? Yeah, it was the first target. Was it Cecil the Lion? Yeah, it was Cecil the Lion. <laughs> it was set up, it was what, 75 yards? 75. At the top of a cliff. So there was no backdrop. Zero. Yeah, the sky was the backdrop. Yeah, the sky was the backdrop. <laughs> And and so we everybody's shooting, and then Ethan gets up and he's like, "Well, I don't, I don't know, like I, I don't, don't have sound, a, I don't, I don't even like have that. a seventy yard pin, like, like I can't do this." And we're just like, "Well, just split your sixty and eighty, put your eighty, you know, which is your bubble on this bottom, and put your sixty in the top, and just split it." And we're like, "What's the big deal?" And you're like, oh, "I don't know, I don't know, I know." And and then some guy walks up and he's like, "Man, some stranger is like, man." I had that 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 site. I would change it for this. Yeah, I was like, all right, well. And then at that point, you could see the mental shift. Just like, well, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> just full send. And you're like, well, I'm sending this. Yeah. And so you and you hit it. I did. I sure in did. the vitals too. Yep. That so. was a that was a good one. Yes. Uh, I would say it, so. Part of <laughs> I'd say part of like the mentality of like just stopping, like really just not worrying about the arrow. And really getting into like what I can control. Yeah. And it's like, all right, the reality is, is like, 
I may or may not lose this arrow, but I'm going to do everything on my end correctly yeah. and like not think about wanting to hit this target in the vitals necessarily. Like, yeah, you have your pin kind of floating in that area, but then just like, instead of being down range, thinking about, oh, is it going to oh, hit the 12 ring? Hit. Is it going to hit the 12 ring? Or is it, uh, my arrow's lost, my arrow's <laughs> lost, my arrow's lost. Instead, really started thinking of like, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, and just really trusting the process that yeah. we've talked about. Um, and so like, I think, and then after that too, like part of it for me, a huge part of it was like, you talk about anchor points and anchor points are important. And when you're going, so like I draw straight out, you know, level, yeah. you know, as you should. And then, um, this is for your angled shots. Yes. For my angled shots. So I draw straight out and I, and I was struggling on those first, first two courses. I'm like, what am I doing? I was like questioning my bow, my equipment. I'm like, is it me? Is it the bow? And it's, mo I mean, it's every always the bow, bro. Yeah, for sure. Like it's never yeah. you. Yeah. It's and so always your equipment. A lot I mean, of it we're shooting a bare bow, so it had to be the bow. So, wow. Okay. Moving, moving right along. <laughs> so, so obviously like, I was just like, all right, uh, most like 99.99% .99 of this was a mental game. And finally I was like, all right, well I have anchor points for a reason. I need to start being like more mindful. And a lot of it was because we were talking back and forth. Yep. Like, how's it going? Why, you know, and I'm sitting here going like, why am I low on every single elevation shot or yeah, cause you're shooting like down. constantly low, right, low, right, yep. low, right, low, right. And, and so, and you're like, well, you know, are you, you really stuck on your, on your anchor points? And so finally I was like, all right, you know, I know I'm bending at the waist like correctly, but the thing was, is that I finally started like getting that anchor point in when I was level. And then I just took my, my, uh, scope housing and my peep sight. And while I bent, like if those shifted at all, it was like, oh, okay, now I'm, I'm moving my anchor point, whether it's my nose, my hand, um, whatever it would have been. And I was like, okay, well then if I can keep those two locked in, there's no reason this isn't going to hit where it needs to hit. And so finally like that, that side of it, the mechanical side of it, like, okay, now I'm like getting confident that this isn't going to be off. And so I had that finally on my side. So I started to hit the vitals at yeah. least, you know, on some of these, these more difficult, um, uphill or downhill shots. Yeah. And that was huge for me. Yeah. And then the other side of it too, was like just getting like away from the down target like the downrange target you know, and just staying where I'm at. Staying present. Yeah. Where I'm, where I'm, what I'm in control of and just trusting that, you know, here's yeah. my process and the outcome is what the outcome is. And it's not about like, Oh, am I going to hit the 12 ring or am I going to outshoot so-and-so or, yeah. or, Oh, my last arrow I lost and whatever it is. Cause we, I lost five yeah. or no, I, I broke two and lost three. Three. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Well, I think that brings up in a, a really important factor like we kind of went into this together for us at least but even the guys that we were shooting with like yeah there's that friendly competition of like who can you know, who can do the best this round who's gonna win it which i think you need yep you know absolutely. That, that outcome based objective but yep. ultimately for like you and i going into this like we went into this wanting and knowingly being challenged on our shot process like because yeah. because i mean if I went in there and if you went in there, we went in there every, every single target and, and 12 ringed it and felt like it was a lucky shot. Like that wouldn't have been that great. Like we wanted to really go in and have our, our whole shot process and our mentality challenge. And which I think is, I don't think a lot, most people go into something like this. They go into like, there's this expectation that I do really well and like, and yeah. create this false positive. Like, Oh, I, I 12 ringed it. Yeah. You know, yep. like, what well, was it? Like an actual 12 ring, like, did you actually feel like, oh, that was a really good shot Like execution? you were in control of it, you know, yes. right, yeah. through. Again, kind of that outcome-based perform or outcome-based objective versus performance-based objective. Like mm -hmm. you and I, we went in there with a performance-based objective. Mm -hmm. Like how well are we going to do regardless mm -hmm. of the outcome? Because the outcome is is only a product of, of, of really what we're doing yeah you know, our performance like if, if we have consistently good performance we're going to have consistently good outcomes yeah well i would say like the full the, for sure the first two of the four courses like i was me both mentally s scattered and then i had mm -hmm. been, been challenging in areas i've never been challenged before yeah. with oh, those, those angled shots yeah oh, we don't practice that at no, all yeah and we, so we hunt in the midwest i mean come on yeah but if you're up in a stand like that's part of why yeah, i true. was missing deer too i and don't have so, a problem because i don't go very high because i yeah. hate heights nice <laughs> like 10 feet oh my gosh. <laughs> that's good <great>. enough <laughs> 
Yeah. But it was, but to be able to look at and like kind of compare and contrast the, the couple different courses and when I was doing well and when I wasn't, and, and even when I, there was shots where I felt like I had everything together and I still didn't execute, mm-hmm. like it still wasn't the outcome I wanted, but I still felt good about the shot. I was yep. like, I knew I do, I did what I, you know, it's, it's more now about repetition. Yeah. But I knew I did what I what I could control yeah. correctly, and it's just yeah. Fixing there's, there's a part there's of what minor, wasn't right. Yeah, but you're in control, right? And so for me, it was like those first two courses. Like I was scatterbrained. Like in hindsight, I was oh, like, was, yeah. oh man, like some I'd walk up and like mechanically sound, and then I was like, oh, in my own head, like. <laughs> and then there's, the there's, the there's, there's other ones where I was like, I had it all right in my mind, yep. but then I'm looking down the hill and my anchor points aren't in place, and so nothing's lined up correctly. And then I'm shooting way low into the dirt. And so finally, as we started moving into the uh, third and fourth and what was cool, what I thought was really cool about this whole thing too, is like, it was, it wasn't one of those. And we like the roller coaster fun where it's just like happens real quick. You know, I mean, yeah. Pay 25 cents. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, if it was going to be like that kind of fun, it would have been us standing, you know, where they had the money shoot. So they just had random targets out at different distances. Like that'd be fun to stand there and shoot at, but not memorable. Yeah. This for me was like, you had to grind. And like, what was cool is like, I you could see yourself like falling apart and like actually having to fight to stay focused, especially being out of shape. And so like, you know, like heavy breathing, like you'd trek up like straight up these hills, down these hills all over the place and to go to these next targets and then like have to basically mentally pull yourself together and physically and then, I mean, at one point I was taking a shot while my left quad, my right quad was cramping. <laughs> and I was like, it was great because I was like, oh, I just had to put this out of my mind. Yeah. And it was a 60 yard shot on the Sasquatch and I missed by like three inches from the 12. Yeah. And so that to me is what made it like memorable is because there was some suck involved. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like it was, yeah, it was just like, hard work. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it was actually enjoyable because I mean, going home that night, my feet hurt. Even waking up this morning, my feet still hurt because mm-hmm. you know, it shows mm-hmm. it shows what happens when the Midwestern guys walk, you know, almost 12 miles. Like we just break down over a bunch of babies. Yep. But it felt really good. It did. It, it did. wasn't like you said, it wasn't that cheap, easy fun. It was like, no, you had to go work and you had to have fun because honestly, too, most people going to the event weren't trekking all four courses yeah in one single day it was yeah. like you know two to maybe three but most people it was two courses a day mm-hmm. and then they come back the next day and knock out a couple more courses and we're like no we got one day we're going on four and it was fun like it was it was totally worth it it was it was i think it was like 11 and a half miles which you yep. whatever but i mean that that to me was like a big part of like what made it memorable was yeah. like, okay. And then it also like, it's challenging too. Like, okay, if I'm actually out hiking all day or let's say we're on a two, three day hunt and you are up late, you get up early and it's just mm-hmm. like, you got to be able to stay mentally engaged. With it, yeah. And I think one thing too is you, there was a lot of those things where it was like is each, each animal or each 3d target was your cold shot. Yeah. Like there isn't a second chance. No. And you know what I'm saying? So if you miss in real life, that yeah. animal's probably gone. It's anyway. gone. Yeah. And so it was cool to see, like for me, it was a nice reality check. Cause a lot of them, when I wasn't doing things right, or even if I thought I was, you know, in the, in the right pocket, I was like, oh man, that's front shoulder for sure. Like that's not in the vitals. Yeah. I need to figure that out, you know? And so it was a nice little reality check. Yeah. Dude. That yeah, was good that way. Yeah. So I think, I think my favorite part well, for watching you, like I said, going into it, like, especially that first course, your confidence was like at zero. I mean, you were questioning like 40 yard can't, shots. Yeah, but you can't be disappointed if uh, you got the bar set low enough. <laughs> and and see, that's, that's totally not the mindset I have. Cause I'm like, your mindset is like low expectation. I'm like, dude, ha, you, my expectation of you is up here. But watching you finish out that, that third course, the Western course, we had this, this bear who was at, what 41 41 41 yards and it was in between like six to eight inch windows between trees i mean it was just like a lane of trees pretty much and you had been really struggling with that like trying to really not focus on trees in the other courses and other targets where there was trees and there's these narrow windows and it was just yeah so you had this 41 yard target six eight inch window and you walked up you pinwheeled that that 12 ring like But, but seeing, not only seeing the, the outcome, like yeah. what you did, but also the confidence and your, your shot execution walking into that yeah. was, was like, that was the pinnacle 
of like you being confident and trusting that process yeah. and, and not caring about the end result, but really well, focusing in on that, that process. Like you could visually tell. Well, the thing is, is what was cool after that shot is I had, I mean, I knew I didn't hit a tree, right? Cause there's a nice explosion that happens. We saw from a few of those. Um, the thing that was cool about that is that after I released that arrow, like if I were to pick apart what I thought I saw the pin at, like when it was happened to be released, like if I was worried about that, yep. I would have been like, oh, I'm not where it was. Yeah. But I knew that like I had pulled through fine. I let the pin float onto the trees, off the trees, on the trees, off the trees, didn't care, just focused on what I could control. And when it went off, I was like, oh, like I'm, I love, like I knew I did what I needed to do. No idea where the target hit and I felt good. Nice. And then we, and then the result was like, oh, I think you got 12. And I'm like, I don't know if it was that, but like I knew what I did. I felt good about how I executed that shot. Yeah. And then we saw it and it was like a bonus almost yeah. where it's like, oh, that was as good as I felt it was. <laughs> you know? It was trusting that process yeah. though. Yeah. It was like dialing that process in and then trusting it and then letting the outcome be the outcome. Yeah. So that was, yeah. yeah, for sure. That was my, probably my highlight to finish out that course, just really strong. And, and there was some challenging shots before that, that I thought like they were just a blast and it was yeah. like, you had to just focus and pull yourself yeah. together and, and like take a second and just be like, all right, put everything else out of your mind. And if it floats onto a tree or if you're floating into the air behind it, cause there's just a sheer <laughs> drop off and your arrow's gone. If you release it at the wrong time, it's just like. It is what it is, yeah. and I'm just going to do what I can control because that float's going to be there. Yeah. And it didn't, you know, focusing, it really wasn't giving me anxiety at that point, which yeah. is nice. And so that was, that was honestly the, the total opposite for me. Yeah, I, dude, I what would you have going on? <laughs> the, the longer right. we went, the worse in, I got into my head. <laughs> Tune oh, in, Trad horrible. Boys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have any Trad, trad guys. Okay, so, so also, one of the things, I think there is, I didn't even see this person, but... I yeah, didn't, he shot a guy. You everybody. He shot. <laughs> he didn't even. He didn't even see him there, and he just lit him up. No, that is not true. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say, I didn't even see another traditional bow there. Didn't see a single recurve. I didn't literally, see a long I literally bow. saw the flash of the top of someone's yeah, limb. And, that and was DJ was like, "Hey, there's a tried bow guy or girl over there." That I didn't even see that. So I, I actually, I was amazed that we didn't actually see anybody else shooting a recurve. Yeah, or a long was, bow or any other traditional style. Like I for sure thought there was going to be like a decent, like yeah, at least a handful more, of people out there. When I say decent percentage, I mean like five, ten percent. Yeah, but there There's, was two people I saw you. Yeah, and then and the, the flash, the of, flash <laughs> of a single upper limb <laughs> of a trad bow, uh, and then it disappeared. Yeah, so I was kind of amazed by that. But no, I mean it was it was a really I think, I mean I went into this my whole goal was to learn the lessons that I didn't know that I needed to learn. Like kind of, you know, that on the skill, that four levels of uh, competency, you know, unconsciously incompetent, consciously incompetent, consciously competent, unconsciously competent. I felt like I've gotten to the point of being consciously incompetent and I knew there was lessons I needed to learn to expose my unconsciously incompetence. Uh, shooting this bow and that's that's what this course did and it was i mean it was rough it was a rough lesson to learn but it was the whole point of it i mean i've lost six arrows yep you know over the course of four courses so 60 targets yeah over yeah 60 targets which in one sense is it's not too bad like there was i think again it kind of goes back to that my expectation slash reality. Yeah. My expectation is way higher than my reality. Yeah. Uh, Cause like I wanted to be like kill zone every single shot, mm -hmm. but it just the longer we went, the more and more I was getting into my head and the more and more I started not trusting my shot process, not trusting my holdovers. And then mm -hmm. two, I think, I think the biggest lesson I learned was I had my clicker, uh, draw length set too long, dude. Well, and that's the thing is like that, me mechanically that wrecked me, but this was, was tough too for me. So like, I, I can see where you wouldn't be like super apt to changing it. 
Yeah. But like for me, when I got out there, I was like, oh man, are my pins messed up? Just because I it oh, was, yeah, so, you're, it you're was shooting so low, consistently right. yeah. low, so consistent. Yeah. And I was like, man, it's got to be, I'm like, man, it's got to be the equipment, bro. Well, I got these new arrows and I never really shot those at 40 yeah. or 50. And so maybe it is this. And I, you know, I only shot them with the 60 pin because I we switched, but it was such a minute difference between the two. Yeah. It's like, I just had to put that out of my head at some yeah. point. Um, but like, to me, mechanically, I was like watching you quite a bit and I'd always, like, almost every target, I was like, so how'd it feel? And, yeah. Every and, target. Like, yeah. It didn't matter feel? whether you hit the target or not. I was like, well, how'd it feel? Yeah. Because there was somewhere you didn't hit the clicker and you're like, I just knew that it was where it was at. Yeah. And now knowing that your clicker yeah. was, which is well, a huge deal for track guys, like that clicker can, like you probably can oh, live and die uh, by especially that. Especially for me, because like that for me, it. It's not so much the draw length that I have a clicker set up for, but it's the the pulling through. Like mm -hmm. like Turner talks about, it's like it's just that constant. Like I'm working towards pulling, 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 pulling. Otherwise, like without it, I tend to get like tardic panic, and I'm like ah, yeah. and <laughs> this is good enough. <laughs> yeah, and so yesterday, once I started getting fatigued, and I didn't realize this, and actually, I'd, I'd heard Snyder, Aaron Snyder, talk about this when setting up his clicker. Like he realized like. There's your 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 clicker length at like full strength, and then there's clicker clicker length at like least amount of strength, and you kind of want to find a happy medium. Mm, yeah. Well, I didn't really ever been challenged to be to the point of being as fatigued as I was yesterday, because mm -hmm. like I literally, especially that last course was so rough. Like I would Dude. get to the point where like I literally, and knowing what I know now after having gone back today, and I'll get into that, but like I was to the point where like I. I would draw, I would get anchored and I would start pulling, pulling. And I literally felt like I could not pull anymore. And then I'd have and to there, shoot. And there'd be no, and there'd click. no clicker. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like just doing it over and over. And, and in the stubbornness, I'm like, I'm not changing this. I'm not changing this. This is said, it's just gotta be me. It's just gotta be me. I just gotta keep pulling, <laughs> keep pulling, keep pulling. And man, like the last few targets was like every single target was like, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Keep pulling. I can't pull anymore. Boom. Send the arrow. And just it was just getting in my head, and so I mean it was rough. It was real rough. And so this morning, I or this afternoon, I was like, you know, what? like I I need to go check that that clicker length. And I ended up checking my my brace height. My string did stretch a little. I was like, a, hardly a lot, like a few twists of the strings. So I'm like, okay, no, that didn't throw that off that much. Yeah. And so I so I. Went and did a few draw cycles and realized, you know what? Because I was still felt fatigued today. And I was like, I'd get a draw and I'd start like pulling, pulling, pulling. Like, man, like I'm not like I'd pull and finally get the clicker. I was like, oh, I realized today I had set my clicker length a quarter inch too long to where I would get set. I would get anchored and I would expand through my chest like I'm supposed to. And then the rest of the pull was all at the shoulder. But when, but I, mm. which I could do at full strength. Yeah. But man, when I was fatigued, that was not happening. So that's awesome. That was a rough it's, lesson it's a, to yeah, learn. It's a rough lesson, but I think there is, I mean, there's multiple times where multiple people actually were like, dude, is your clicker the right? Like, like are yeah, you sure yeah you're that? asking. Yeah. You're like, dude, Be did that stretch at all? Did well, it move? And the thing is like, the thing for me is like, you were shooting at angles. I'm sure you had not shot. Oh no, before. I had not. Where, yeah, where like that really threw me off too. You had feet like on two different steps at one point. <laughs> I had the one dude with the one shot where again oh, it was a clip have, shot too, where I, I like pretended to sneak up and I got down like one knee and my, <laughs> my leg was out front you know, on the hill and I was like, I'm going to shoot this thing, oh, and yeah. I go to shoot oh, it. Oh yeah! And as I release, my limb comes forward, smacks my leg, and the whole bow just tips <laughs> forward in the air, goes boom. Man. right underneath bye bye and that was gone that, yep, was, that was it one of the lost arrows that was so awesome that was a rough lesson that was very make rough rough lesson number one make sure your leg is out of the way of the limbs dude yeah and so for me like when i was watching you do it i'm like okay there's there's like the anatomy of like how your body's going to twist and contort and all that stuff yeah. when you're taking these different shots and you're angling yeah. your whole body yeah bending at the waist sure but like you're still like if you're at you know, on flat ground and you're already like maxed out as far as like your expansion. Yeah. It's like, if you're I just, for some reason, every time you'd be like, wait, you know, if you're looking way up a hill or down, I'm like, 
if that clicker is just not there. <laughs> that string still has some loop yeah, to it. Like, exactly. It's not There's even some, taunt. It's just sagging. This idiot keeps pulling and he's not going anywhere. Yeah. And so I, I could definitely see how that would have been frustrating. Being yeah. like, oh, well, I'm doing everything right. Yeah. It was, it was like one of those things where it's like, some, okay, I'm a trying lot of, to trust the process, trust my equipment. Mm -hmm. And in and, and my mind, I'm thinking like, it's just me. It's just me. It's just me. And no, it was actually, hey, you set your equipment up wrong. And so then, therefore, it was it was causing me to get in my head. And, oh, that last course was just rough. Well, that last course was cool because I think all the elements, because there was, like, total, like, absolute victories and absolute losses. Yeah. Because it was, like, you're mentally fatigued, you're physically fatigued. Yeah. And it's, like... You've kind of worked out that it's not your equipment for the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, all right, I'm either putting this together or I'm not. Yeah. And a lot of the shots they offered um, on those different 3D targets were, were just absolute worst case scenarios most yeah. of the time. Yeah. That. You know, and so, and even some that weren't, I totally blew it. Yeah. <laughs> I will, I will say ones. probably my favorite, favorite target on that last course was the Sasquatch at 61 yards. Dude, like, that was so I, legit. I was pretty pumped you with You were trying my, to downplay it. I'm like, dude, take a picture with this. You just bombed this from so, 60 I mean, I yards. Like, now I'm going first and 61 yards. And I figured I'm like, okay, I know my holdovers and kind of, yeah, I figured that out. I was like, well, I've got a hold here and one shot, one air. I mean, it Let was it a rip. little high. But if but you was, think about it, though, it was still think, in the kill zone. It's still it in the kill zone. In the kill of zone of a giant Sasquatch at sixty yards. And if the anatomy, I'll take the, it. If the anatomy is the same as yeah, us, that would have been heart. that was a that's heart. heart yeah, that was a heart shot. So which is what you I meant was pretty to do. pumped. Yeah, yeah, you were anat 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 anatomically anat correct. Anat yeah, anatomically <laughs> correct. Yeah. So I was uh, that was a small victory. No. And then I missed the giant moose right at the end. <laughs> Dude, let's not let's do let's do each other a favor and not talk about the giant moose. How we both missed the giant moose. Dude. All right, we're okay. Talk. So, so we both we had, are talk we both it. had, each had a miss that was totally our own fault. Oh, dude, beyond. So that, so that moose beyond. Yeah. All right, so the first moose, I, I legit the, don't the know. Last what moose. Yeah, sorry, the first and last moose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And so this one, you were shooting between trees. I mean, I'm physically smoked, mentally smoked. I am like, just. I'm, I'm holding it together as best I can. And the group behind us was, you were, were smack talking. Dude, they, they were awesome. <laughs> yeah, he was legit. Um, and uh, and we get we get to the moose, and this is one of those things where I felt like everything was good. No. I didn't even realize that it, the possibility of hitting that tree was there, basically, because it was still, it was one of those tight windows again yeah. with, between the trees, but the tree wasn't even in my peripheral mental, like it just wasn't a factor. Yeah. And so whatever it was that it, my arrow ended up hitting the, hitting the tree yeah, and skimming off the tree and, and, then... and hitting the guts of the moose. Yeah. Like my arrow totally blew up though. Like I walked up and my, my knock was buried in into the arrow itself. <laughs> and then my, uh, my whole front of my arrows just, just exploded. Yeah. So it oh, hit man. a tree deflected and hit the moose in the guts, which is what you want <laughs> typically. Um, and then everybody after they apparently after taking their shot, uh, well, also the group we've been smack talking the whole that whole fourth course. Yeah, uh, Avery. Yeah, he, he, he totally freaking pinwheeled, pinwheeled the twelve. Like, unreal. Yeah, just it was such a nice it. shot. I was, Maybe a quarter inch better. That dude, was it. It was great. I was like seriously like just, I'm so stoked for like a, any other archer out there. Like when you have a good shot, like I'm excited yeah. for him. So I was like, that's legit. And he had been shooting really well the whole yeah. time from what I could tell. <laughs> um, and so then everybody goes back to take a second shot, and I'm like, oh okay, well I guess I'll do it. And I, I don't know if I just was not like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say, I don't know. Clearly I was not present enough. Cause I ended up putting my 40 pin on <laughs> the, the 51. I realized it after <laughs> I go, it's the arrow. last one. <laughs> and it's like a foot underneath yeah. the moose Phew. and be out just totally over misses. the cliff. And, and I'm gone. like, and I just look at us and I'm like, you know what? I don't need to end with the 12. Yeah. I, I'm just calling. I'm like, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Good yeah. job. Everybody. And then you're like, you're like, I don't know why. It yeah. did that. And all of a sudden you're like, shoot, I think I used my 40 pin. <laughs> <laughs> but like, there was no pride. This is what was really cool though. Like, cause we were with those guys and like, yeah. there was just no pride or ego. Like we were smack talking and just having fun with it. But there was like no pride or ego where it's like, oh, I have to show these people what I can do. Whether yeah. it was you, like, I, I just was like, oh, I got nothing to prove here. No. Like I just, am, I'm recognizing like, 
I'm it. That's, That's what it. happened. I'm sure I could have put the next one on, but it's like it's not going to make me feel any better about just being not being me- like mentally present for yeah. the shots that I took. Yeah. And so it, that was it. Yeah. It was bad. Well, that was like the a few targets before we had an uphill shot, 32 yards. I don't even remember what the target was. It was a smaller target. Okay. Yeah, but I remember it was the after the angled shot was 32 yards. I was like, well, perfect. My spot on's 35. <laughs> yes. Which. Yes. Which normally, if my spot on's thirty five, hold a little low and we'll hit where you know a few inches high of the holdover. But in you know the great state of fatigue, I was like, I'll just hold a few inches high and we'll send it. <laughs> Held a few inches high, sent it, and just saw that arrow just fly like literally, like just barely over the back. You knew what it was immediately, You're and like, also oh. I was just like, oh, I'm you an idiot. idiot. <laughs> yeah. I was supposed to hold low, not high. Dang it! Yeah, yeah I was, so we I was both let pissed. it slip mentally yeah. a couple times, didn't we? But but I, but at the same time, like I mean, the, those lessons suck. But I'd much rather have those lessons happen now because like there's such good lessons to have cemented in your mind. Like, what is your holdover, or what yeah. pin do I need to be using? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, and I think I much rather learn now than on that nice buck that comes walking through yes exactly like, oh i should have held low when <laughs> i should yeah yeah it's not like arrows are free right no that's another lesson too don't use your nice hunting arrows make some cheap nah, 3d arrows i say use your hunting arrows man put it on the line <laughs> if you don't feel like you, you know like it does give you a sense of pressure when it's like there's just not when you see nothing behind it but just air you're like this arrow's for sure gone. Yeah. And then you just got to put that out of your head and take the shot. Yeah. Um, dude, I would say if I like the, some of the main lessons, if I were to kind of consolidate it, I guess, um, from that day for me was like one, it put to the test how much I actually trust my equipment Yeah. because I found yeah. myself early on questioning my equipment and I just had to be like, put aside, put aside by my bias of like, Oh, it's not me. Yeah. And just go, you know what? I know I've shot at this and I've shot at this. Well, there's something else I need to figure out. So after I figured out, it's not, you know, after I've acknowledged finally, it's like, it's not my bow. It's It's, it's me. It's the idiot behind the bow. Exactly. And then after that, I was like, okay, so what's wrong when I'm seeing a consistent difference. And then that gave me, you know, being willing to accept that it's not my bow and not like, Oh, I need to change this guys. Yeah. You know, on the fly, it was like, okay, I do have enough confidence in this, in my setup that, I know I can, I should be hitting better yeah. than this. And so then after that, I it was able to go, you know, cause you're trying to stay humble enough to be like, all right, then it's got, you know, what's the next step in this process. Okay. What am I not doing? And then being able to bounce it off of guys yeah. there and it not being just like everybody trying to yeah. shoot each other. Well, I think that's that, that too is so invaluable to have a good group of people to go with that. Like we had like, yeah, there's that friendly competition, yeah. you know, we're each round so you know, we're all trying to win that round. Yeah. But at the same time, like we're all helping one another grow and learn yeah. and, and, and giving good critique and feedback. Cause I think, yeah, you can go into an event like that, trying to win it with your buddies per se yeah. and get lucky and develop a false positive versus, Hey, I'm going in, I'm trying to learn mm-hmm. to increase my, my shooting ability. Yeah. And there wasn't a single guy there that didn't want you to tw- just 12 ring it yeah. every, every time. Yeah. Like everybody, there wasn't a time when someone got a 12 and, and uh, the guy who didn't was like, Oh, whatever, dude. Yeah. It, everybody was like stoked for you. Yeah. So that was really cool. Yeah. Um, so after like kind of figuring out like, okay, my mechanics are off. And so then like, okay, what is it? What is, so how do I make sure my mechanics are on? And so then being like, well, why do I actually have anchor points? <laughs> oh, for when I'm not just standing straight <laughs> out. Right. You know, like with my arm straight out in front of me and that's it. And so I was able to develop oh, that, that bubble there for a reason. <laughs> oh, weird. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And then, and then, um, I'd say the mental side of it, the mental side of it for me was like, you know what? I'm in control of what's right here. Mm-hmm. Now my arrow may go exactly where I want it to sometimes, but like if I'm worried about, if I'm only worried about downrange yeah. and like getting target, basically getting target panic or yeah, not. That's what I, and that's, that was my biggest battle yeah. yesterday. And, and I was, and I'm looking at the, got to the point where I'm looking at these, the sky behind these, these uh, targets and going, I don't care. I'm looking at trees 
and my pins hitting trees and it's not giving me anxiety. I'm not like, oh, get it back on there and punch the trigger. I mean, yeah. I had my moments of punching the trigger for sure. Yeah. But I could tell you I punched the trigger. It wasn't subconscious. Yeah. And the ones where I felt like I executed it well, most of those ones ended up, you know, within the kill zone. It wasn't yeah. all twelves by, yeah. by no means. Um, but it really I, I was able to see in a single day like the difference between doing things mechanically sound and mentally sound. And, and then the, the opposite of that, and then, you know, questioning everything and not having confidence in your process and, and really trusting that and just being able to kind of almost get tunnel vision on the things that mattered. Yeah. So that, that to me was like just a huge benefit of going to the 3d, having some, you know, some weight behind what you're doing besides yeah. just like a square target. Yeah. Just, duh, duh, duh. <laughs> Flat ground. Right. Yeah. Let's we'll see if I can get all three targets, you know, cause it's, it was just a cold shot, every single one of them. Yeah, you know, in my mind, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. Those are kind of my biggest lessons learned from 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 uh, yesterday, and for sure highlighted things that I need to practice more often. Yeah, yeah. I think you can you can easily split doing something like that into two categories. You have your yeah your mechanical side, and then you have your mental side. Yeah. And you know, I think some of the some of the people we shot with, like, there's definitely some mechanical work that needed to be done, like. You know, like j making sure you're drawn on a, you know, on a straight plane and then bending at the waist to get on those up and down shots. Yeah. We, there were people actually, it was cool because there were people that would, they recognize like they drew at the target elevated. Yeah. The notable, yeah. I think it was Ben. Yeah, Ben. He drew it at elevated and he's like, uh, he let no, down. Let down. It's like, like, I just drew on target. He's like, I, I need to, I need to restart this yeah. guys. And we're like, yeah. Like that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I love that. And then, and then, you know, and then, and even some people, okay. A lot of people with their, their trigger control, it was, it was like, it was a lot of trigger punching going on. Mm -hmm. Granted, I can't, I can't arp on anybody. Cause I felt like I was <laughs> quote unquote, like I was, I was, I wasn't trigger you were punching. The, I was plucking were, punching. Like you, you I were was the trad pluck, version of, yeah, I was trigger plucking, punching. I was plucking like I was plucking a chicken. Like it was, it got bad. Couple of shots, dude. There's some. A I, lot was, of shots. I was concerned for your mental health. <laughs> I was concerned for my mental health. I was like, health. oh no, yeah. Um, so I definitely, you know, and then the other side, the mental side of it, you know, like growing into the mental side, like really shifting. I mean, even some of the people that we shoot with, like they're really good shots naturally, but mentally, I don't think they've developed that mental side, like yeah, of, of really being present in the shot and, and focus on the execution. Yeah. And they're just so focused on the outcome that yeah. like right now it works for them really well, really I'll well. Say. Yeah. But I think once that mental side, like when that target panic starts to develop, cause I've, you mm -hmm. know, I don't have personal experience. I came into archery with target panic. Mm -hmm. So I've had to learn how to overcome our target panic off the get go. Whereas some guys, well, here, like I say, they, they, they haven't, they haven't, uh, battled that yet. Well, I don't uh, know. So, I don't know if they haven't battled it necessarily. I think that or it's very like controlled. Me, it's like a very me, small. Well, for me, it was, it was thinking I didn't have it when I did. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people that are in that position yeah. where it's like, well, if I'm hitting the target, right. But like yeah. when you are, but, but if you, if your target panic isn't like that, like, like um, the whole target intense, like, yeah, if it's yeah. not like I have, I came into archery and, and, and realized I had like intense target panic right away. Like, like bad where yeah. some people like, yeah, it might be so like minute, but still that like, Oh, that pins right there. Boom. Yeah. Punch the trigger. Boom. Well, and I think there's varying levels to target panic for sure. Based on what I've been hearing too. But like for me, like I didn't feel like I had target panic and it wasn't until I started to address my process where I found like when I actually did set in a process, yep. I started recognizing like, oh, look oh. at me wanting to just smack it right <laughs> when it's on the target and like be quote unquote in control yep. instead of really being in control. Yeah. And I think uh, I, I know I, I questioned a few people like not question in the negative sense, but I was asking them like, so what is your shot process? Like yeah. explain to me what you're thinking while you're going. And, you know, and even just being like, so do you like, do you just hit the trigger as soon as it goes on the point? Yeah. Which is. I would say more typical than not. Oh yeah. So it's not, and they're still better shot than I am. I know. Which is, but so I would say, yeah, <laughs> it, is, it is frustrating. We're just a couple of meatheads. We're talking, <laughs> we have to be taught so much. We're special, but, but really like we forgot our helmets. Yesterday. But imagine in my mind and like, I don't want to be like insulting to the people who are already better than me, but in yeah. my mind, it's like, dude, imagine how much better you would be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I, I don't think mean that like in a negative sense. Cause you're yeah. better than me, but yes and no, because like that, the foundation. I mean, if you look at your, your shot process as your foundation, 
Well, when you're put into really tough situations, that process is that ability is going to break down way quicker, way faster, you know, and at some point it will like when, so yeah. So I think, yeah, you have your mechanical and you have your mental. And I mean, it's been huge for both of us, you know, for anybody that's just maybe joining us in this episode, like for us, the mental side has really been challenging and helped a lot with stuff from Joel Turner and his shot IQ. And yeah. just, I mean, he's, he's the, the mind doctor of archery. Like mm -hmm. it's just, he really, really teaches you how to develop, you know, being in control, being present, focusing on what you're doing, not focusing on the end result of what that arrow is going to do. Like, yeah, and that was, that was huge yesterday. You know and what? I failed at it miserably. Yeah, yeah. And I would say like, for me, archery has actually become way more fulfilling and encouraging, like having that process and something to critique and think about yeah. instead of it just being like, Oh, I'm not sure why I didn't hit the yeah. 12 ring. Yeah. Like I know I hit the, you know, I slapped the trigger at the right time. And so for me, it's been a lot more fulfilling being able to go, you know, like even asking you like, so how'd you feel about it? Yeah. And then if you felt good, it's like, okay, well, there's something we've got to work with something. Yeah, there's or something if, mechanically. Or, or you'll just call or it out. maybe mentally. Yeah, or you'll just call it out and be like, dude, I totally just rushed that shot. Yeah. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, and it's, yeah, exactly. Like that's that's for me what I've, what I've learned from Joel is like, it's just the ability to break down your own shot process and execution and mechanics. Like you're just, you're constantly growing because you're like, oh, that right there mm -hmm. could have been tweaked or, oh man, I, I plucked or, or I punched mm -hmm. or, Oh, I was focused on this or I was focused mm -hmm. on this or mm -hmm. this or that. Like it's just allows you to understand what's happening and why it's happening and what needs to be, be fixed other than like, Oh man, I just, I missed. Yeah. And, what do and I do? For me, oh, and, I don't know. Yeah. And, and like in my, in my best moments, um, yesterday there were times, uh, where I literally verbally like out loud was like, I'm going to do this right or I'm not going to do it at all. Mm -hmm. Like I, I chose before I even started my process. I was like, I'm either, I'm like, I'm not going to even draw back unless I'm going to do it the right way. And there were some shots where I was like shaking, <laughs> like I was just fatigued. Yeah. And there were some where I was just shaking, shaking, shaking. And part of that has to do with like my tempo and trying to find yeah. that. Um, but it ended up hitting a real, you know, the mark yeah. on, on that one in particular. Cause I remember being like, there's no way this is going to like, just like fighting that. Like, there's no way if I'm shaking this much, it's going to yeah. hit where I want it to. And it ended up being a really good shot. And it was like just choosing to fight that battle yeah. before the shot even starts. And it ended up being, you know, something quote unquote successful, yeah. but I felt good about it. Whether, Cause, yeah, whether cause it you're the in control yeah. of the whole, the whole time. Yep. And that's where like, I, I was really struggling. Cause I mean, the, especially the last course, I mean, there was, Time's going and I was telling myself, I get a drawback, get an anchor, and I'd be like, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Why is this not going off? Keep pulling. Ah, shoot, send it. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then I yeah. would just, it would, it would get sent not on, on target the way it should have been. Yeah. You know, and again, it kind of goes back to the mechanics because of the equipment, it wasn't set right. Yep. Which then influenced the mental side, which then influenced oh the mechanics and yeah. I mean it's a it's a it was a vicious cycle of just going yeah. back and forth, yeah. back and forth. Oh. Well, and that was what's what was nice with having some time behind my bow and even like the small things we did yeah. change with the arrow, right? The small things we did change with the arrow yeah. still came into question for yeah. me. It's like, well, what if I know I'm shooting the green arrows with this, this, yeah. and this? And then finally, at one point, I was like, okay, why don't you just shoot the green arrows? You're confident in those. Like, I know those arrows will shoot the same because, I mean, practically the same yeah, specs. Yeah, and, like, and it helped a lot. Why not just shoot the green arrows? That, and I wasn't as worried about losing them because yeah. I'm my hunting arrows are <laughs> the ones you just built. <laughs> and then, but after, like, after I got through that little, that patch, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, I, I could have just it switched was, back to the red. I wouldn't have cared. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't have been a second a thought at that yeah. point, but I already had them in my quiver. So, we're good. Yep. So, so, dude, next year, what's next your hopes? Year. Next year, my hopes is uh, Bofest offers day passes, and Bofest creates. They do offer day passes, don't they? Yeah, for ninety bucks. What a joke! <laughs> and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have some future conversations. I thought it was with eighty. Eighty or ninety, one of the two. It was like astronomically high. It was like really like. Never mind. Anyhow, my my goal so for next year, for me, for you, for us, next year, my goal is to um, hopefully have a. You know, a full year plus behind shooting a trad bow more than a month behind the bow and arrow setup that I did have. Um, and just have a really good process down, like mm -hmm. to have the confidence and ability to be like kill zone every single shot. Yeah. And, and to make the 12 pin, like the ideal, like perfect execution in the kill zone, like 
the like default almost like yeah like that's the the norm like that yeah yeah, yeah. and and like, have like that's the, the minimal yeah. acceptable yep. area to be in is yep. like the 10 ring yeah whereas this year i was like if i could hit it anywhere yeah. and not lose an arrow i'll be happy yeah yeah so i would say yeah I, i'd be right along the same lines as just entering it with more confidence yeah and i think that if i'm able to go into it having like sound mechanics like knowing that i'm confident in my mechanics yeah now, you know, shooting up and downhill and, and, and I'm going to need to practice those outside of Bowfest, right? Yeah. And so actually making that a priority because they're, they're, I mean, up in a deer stand, like you're shooting down, yeah. you better know how to do that. Yeah. Right. And I'd missed at least two deer shooting down from the deer stand. Yeah. And I can for sure look at, look back and be like, Hmm, yep. That's why. <laughs> Cause those are the only two down downward no shots I had ever and executed. Were, yeah. And then I didn't, I didn't execute any more after that either yeah. until Bowfest. And so it really highlighted that for me. Um, so kind of us along the same lines is just being able to go into it, know my equipment is yeah. sound and then mentally being sound throughout, you yeah. know, and then uh, I, I know you mentioned this too, is like we took the taxi to the top of the, I mean, we walked 11 some miles, right? Yeah. But we were taking the taxi to the top of it, um, and we're both like, you know, yep. what? Well, screw that next year. Yeah, we're just we're walk, walking. We're gonna walk the whole thing. We're gonna grind it Dude, out. Dude, that'd be the legit. Whole way. Yeah. Uh, so I'm up for it if you're up for it, dude. Let's do it. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope yeah, you enjoyed the bonus it, episode. <laughs> hopefully I didn't bore you guys. Yeah, and I, I hope... Uh, what are all our mental issues? Yeah, no, it's all good. I hope uh, you guys got out to Bowfest and didn't have to pay $150. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for today, man. Yeah. So Ethan, where can they find us? They can find us at on Facebook. And you can find us on Instagram. You can find us on iTunes. Uh, man, what else we got? YouTube, Google, YouTube, Google Play. Man, there's uh, like three other ep- three other abstract. I think check there's out a, hey, check out the link ca- tree. Castbox, yeah, Cast- the link tree will have everything. Castbox, I did see there's at least one download on there. So there's there's someone there's out somebody there who's somebody. using it. Uh, it's probably a bot, yeah. Russian bot. Yeah, right? probably Russian bot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wrap up on that. All right, thanks guys for tuning in. Peace out. Peace out.